Welcome to Women Making a Difference, PJSAO Women Who Inspire and Motivate. Brenna Bush, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much. So Brenna, oftentimes people get to hear from me as the elected state's attorney. So I want our constituents to get to know you a little bit better as well. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and your role in the office? So I work in the major crimes division. So that means I prosecute violent crimes, which include assaults, armed robberies, home invasions, attempted murders and other quality of life type crimes. So how long have you been a prosecutor? Um, I've been a prosecutor now for about five and a half years. Five and a half years. So what inspired you to go into prosecution? Was this your lifelong dream? Or when you went to <laughs> law school, did you say, hey, I want to be a prosecutor? Or was there something else that motivated you to get into this line of work? So it was really my background. Um, I grew up with a single parent in a very poor, violent, gang control neighborhood. So my background really affected how I view justice and the law. My original thought was that the only way I could help was to work on the criminal defense side. So before law school, I gained experience working at various private defense firms, doing trial and appellate work, and later clerking at the public defender's office, um, ultimately assisting with incestual sex offenses. But once I began working on those cases, I ultimately realized that advocating for victims and their rights can be just as important uh -huh. as it is to advocate for defendants. Around this time, there was a prosecutor that was trying to get me to change sides and uh, go work at the prosecutor's office. Although he wasn't successful at that time, what he said to me had one of the greatest impacts on my career. He said, look at how much of an impact you've had working for the defense. Now, imagine with your background, your work experience, and your critical eye for justice, he said, imagine how much more you could accomplish if you joined the state. Imagine what you could do, not only for defendants, but for victims, for the community, for justice. So it wasn't until I'd been an attorney for five years that I realized I wanted to be a criminal prosecutor. And so that's when I left the civil side to join the prosecutor's office. Well, that's such an uh, amazing story um, because I think a lot of us come uh, to uh, this line of work from, from different perspectives, different experiences, and having grown up like you did um, in, a, in a neighborhood that had its challenges, um, but still wanting to provide justice for those who were accused of violating uh, the law means that you are a very compassionate person, which is what we need in the prosecutor's office because we are not, you know, although sometimes the defense says we're on different sides, in the courtroom, we sit at different tables, obviously, we take different positions oftentimes in cases, but I think we're just on the side of justice. And, and we also protect the interests and the rights of defendants through that process, right? So, so can you tell me like what has been your experience since you've um, been in this office and how do you use your unique perspective uh, to um, make decisions on the cases that, that you're assigned? Well, my perspective really comes just from my background, uh -huh. right? I, um, although I, you know, I've, I've gained a lot of experience, my perspective is never going to change. Uh -huh. It's just going to be added to, right, as I gain more information. So I know what it's like to be scared of your own neighborhood, to fear retaliation if you speak up. I know how convictions can make reentry challenging, and I saw how incarcerations keep families apart. So for me, when I think of um, being a prosecutor, it's not just one person I'm considering, like when I was with the defense. It's the defendant and my victim and the community. Mm -hmm. And sometimes also the family of the defendant because sometimes a defendant, what he needs, he's not ready for. So the help you're giving the defendant really is help that makes him better for his family. 
or her family. You know, rehabilitation takes time and it takes someone to believe. And, you know, when I've had the opportunity for defendants to shake my hand or thank me, you know, that impact has just gone, it, it just makes you feel so good because um, the hands that I've shaken have not been people that I've null prost or dismissed. It has been convictions, people that I actually have sent to jail, but with a plan, you know, if you can have a reentry plan right now, I'm working on a case with a potential mental health plan. Um, we're, we came up with it, we're trying it out. We're gonna see how it works in front of the courts. The victims are on board because, um, you know, every case matters. Every defendant matters, every victim matters. And to just put somebody in jail, that's, that shouldn't be the beginning of the story. The beginning of the story should be, okay, what do they need? Detox, do they need to make sure that this plan works out? And sometimes people do need incarceration to hang over their head or a little bit of time in incarceration to really be ready for that change, to kind of um, have the foundation they need to reentry. Because sometimes taking them away from a situation, they can't do it themselves. Yeah, so absolutely. You know, as, as we look at some of our very challenging cases, um, the armed carjackings, the armed robberies, the assaults, the attempted murders, often what we find are people who are broken, people who have had challenges growing up, people who have been victims themselves, right? And, um, and often they're relatively young. They are, you know, 18 to about 26, 27, uh, who are really committing very violent offenses. But because of their youth, because they're relatively young, um, they also have the greatest opportunity for rehabilitation. And so one of the things I know that you know this, we're uh, developing a program for emerging adults that fit in that category, where we may, in fact, uh, ask for some, a period of incarceration, um, but with a plan, with a plan uh, to, re so that they're, when they reenter back into our communities, they're ready to be productive citizens, that whatever issues they were facing or dealing with, that they're getting that treatment while they're in, uh, incarcerated. Because we also have to, again, provide justice for victims, too. So we can't just say, okay, well, everyone gets out and here's what we're going to do. But we can say, you're still a part of our community. Yes, you're going to have to face these consequences, but we're not throwing you away. So how do you feel in terms of being able to be in an office that, you know, that advocates for that type of justice for the community? makes me very, very proud because not all prosecutors' offices have that view. Um, and, you know, sometimes because it's something that somebody hasn't been used to, the idea that um, the prosecutors are also on your side, you know, it doesn't make the plea bad or the idea bad. Sometimes it's just scary because you're used to an adversarial confrontation with a prosecutor. So I think when um, defendants and their families have an opportunity as well to see that the prosecutor cares just as much, that's what makes me proud to work in this office because we really do care and we wanna come up with alternative solutions. It doesn't have to be boilerplate. It can be whatever is required for this defendant as well as for this victim. Absolutely. I, you know, I'm so grateful to have uh, someone like you in the office. You do great work. You're very passionate. I know I see you work around the clock. I see your emails come out and I'm like, Britt is you know, on it. <laughs> um, but I think it's because you care so much. And, um, and when uh, we interviewed you and when we ultimately made the decision to hire you, um, I knew that you would be a star. And I see that in you. And I am really excited that you're part of the team. 
and I can't wait to see how much you progress here in the office. So thank you so much. Now, I know we've been heavy <laughs> and I had a heavy conversation so far, but are there, um, you know, is there any advice you might want to give to either prospective law students or individuals who may be in law school um, and trying to figure out what they want to do in their career? Um, I would say um, if you are interested in the law and if you're looking to make a difference for people within your own community, your friends, for victims, or just for the public interest that, uh, at large, just please consider working for this office. Learn what it's like to work as a prosecutor, how to work with victims, come up with alternative solutions, and meet officers. You know, there are some really fantastic officers here in Prince George's County. Um, meet them. And don't become disheartened uh, or feel that the only way to impact, impact change is to assist the defense. Working at a prosecutor's office truly is rewarding. And I'm very lucky to work with so many fantastic people here at the PG County, Prince George's County State Attorney's Office. Well, thank you so much, Brenda. This was such thank a great you. conversation. And again, I look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you. I'm very excited and proud to work for you and for Prince George's County.